Welcome to another episode of Sanford Says. This is Lisa Holder, Communications Officer, and I have two very special guests with us today. Sheila DePace. Sheila is a Sanford resident, and her husband have been here since 1998. She is the former president of the Sanford Community Garden from 2015 to 2019, and Kelly Coons, who is the current president of the Sanford Community Garden. And guess what? The topic is Sanford Community Garden. Welcome, Sheila. Welcome, Kelly. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. So, sh- so sh- Sheila, let's start with you. So we're talking about the garden. I'm not sure if many people know that there is a community garden. How did you personally discover the garden? You, you and your husband have been living in Sanford since 1998. Can you share some of that story with us? Yeah, it was actually in uh, 2014. I was working in my garden at my house, and my friend Susan came by and said, "Hey, come with me. Let's let's go to to the meeting at a secure, uh, at the the garden down the street." And I said, "What garden are you talking about?" So I had been there since '98 and didn't even know we had a community garden, um, and it literally is just about four blocks from my house. So it was pretty exciting. I went down with her, and there was a guest speaker talking about tomatoes, and uh, I'm I'm really not a great gardener, I have to say. Um, and I was fascinated, but I really like the feel of the space, and that's kind of when I fell in love with the garden. It's it's a beautiful area next to an 11-acre park, and then that little wooded area, and you just listen to the wind through the trees, and it's just a beautiful spot. And, of course, I immediately saw lots of potential. So that's kind of how I found out about it, and I joined in uh, 2014 as a, as a struggling gardener. Okay, so it all started with tomato talk, basically. Uh-huh, that's it. <laughs> yep. So what's the history of this wonderful garden? And you, did you say where it's located? Uh, it is on 1792, across from the middle school, in between, uh, I guess that's 15th and 18th, and that's where the big uh, green space is uh, sure. that, that we call the 18th Street Park. Yeah. So the garden, actually, the history of it is kind of interesting because uh, it's a nod to our Celery City uh, past. So in 2010, there was an internal employee suggestion to have a community garden, um, and it uh, got some great thumbs up. I believe it was Christy, Krista or Christy a Day, and Elizabeth Harkey um, really spearheaded it. Uh, they worked with um, Robert Bowden, Robert Bowden uh, from Lucas. Uh, I'm sorry, not Lucas, Lou Gardens, and he helped educate them on how to build the garden. That's kind of how that uh, that went down. And then we had Lowe's, I apparently helped, and also Ho- Horsemeyers, and they all collaborated and made the garden. So and, yes, and Horsemeyers is a local business here absolutely. in Stanford. Yep. All right, great. And so when did you become a leader at, the, at this wonderful community garden? Um, right around, I think it was 2015, uh, this time of year, I believe, in 2015, I became a vice president and then uh, shortly thereafter president for the community garden. So I saw a lot of potential with the garden and ways that it really needed to be uh, improved. There was a lot of rotting wood, unfortunately, and the fences, well, the squirrels were dancing right through the fences <laughs> so and stealing all of our edibles. So it had a lot of potential. Um, so I, I decided to uh, go ahead and jump in and see what I could do to make it a better, a better place. That's wonderful. And so when did you want to lead the garden in a new direction? Well, I think I was in 16, 2016. I really got uh, aggressive and got organized in how we could make it bigger. Um, a safer area for our edibles to not get eaten, um, make the beds bigger. I wanted to really get an organic feel and organic practices, uh, make the beds bigger than they were. They were four by eight, so now they're, I think, four by 16. Um, a better shed, a communal area. We had no place to sit, so when we had guest speakers or potlucks. Um, and then create an educational area next to it so we could be able to entertain maybe groups of 20 to 25 and teach larger groups like children or, or whatnot um, how to do organic gardening. So I had kind of a bigger vision for it, and then that's kind of when I started. I think it was about 2015, 16. I got pretty busy with that and fundraising. Yeah, that sounds like some wonderful initiatives that you had there with the community, of course, and then young people and teaching them about gardening. And so you talk about fundraising. How do how is the garden funded, actually? Um, the garden is well. We have an annual membership, so every February, um, all the uh, the members they pay their dues for the mm-hmm. year. Uh, it's fifty dollars, and you get a four by sixteen plot. So um, the dues help us sustain the garden and pay for any repair work that needs to be done um, at the garden. So that's pretty much how that works. And is there room now? For more folks, I guess we'll talk to yeah. Kelly we'll about get, that. We'll get to that. Stay cool stuff. tuned. Stay okay, tuned. can't yeah. wait to, to hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, are you? Do you have any roadblocks that you had to overcome to make all of this happen? 
Um, well, the first thing was, and that goes back to how I discovered the garden, I didn't know it existed. And a lot of people in Sanford didn't know it existed because it's in a beautiful place, but it's tucked away. It's right on 1792, but it's kind of hidden behind checkers. Yeah. So my goal was to raise awareness. So I got really busy doing a lot of PR work, and uh, luckily the Sanford embraced me and the garden. Um, we were able to get quite a bit of our, um, articles in the Sanford Herald. Also, even Edible Orlando did a write-up on us last year. Mm -hmm. um, my Sanford magazine, uh, Pearl has been fabulous in helping get the word out. Uh, we're also given spots at Alive After Five. Uh, the Welcome Center helped us do fundraising. Uh, we did a uh, raffle, raised about $2,000, and then we got with Lowe's, and they made a project of the garden, and that's really how we got the funding going to rebuild it right yeah. so Lowe's yeah. and a lot of a lot of marketing promotion and word of mouth yeah and word of mouth and the and uh, the city helped a lot on their website and on the Facebook page as well um, always supporting us and also the extension office did a lot of uh, promotion and getting the word out through their newsletters as well so and so when you mean extension mm -hmm. is that with the county yes yeah. the county extension office can you explain so, a little bit more of that that office and what that does and why they reached out or helped? Uh, well, they have all the master gardeners, so they love to dig into their community in any way possible, mm -hmm. and they really embrace the community garden because there really aren't that many uh, in the county. So they were excited to work with us and right. promote us and help educate our gardeners as well. Yeah, yeah. and I think there's a ma mar Master Gardener Expo coming yeah. out, uh -huh. in, in, in they have something, so check out the county's yes website too. So yeah, that first roadblock was literally awareness, getting people to know we exist and that it's a way to grow organic, you know, organic practices for fruits and vegetables or whatnot. So getting the word out, getting the funding, right. and then making it all happen. So Yes. Yeah. Again, for you, those listening that are new to Sanford or don't know or not in Sanford, the garden is located along 1792 between, what is it, 15th? 15th and I want to say 17th or 18th. Right across the street. Right across from 18. 1792, 18th. Yeah, yeah, the Stanford Middle School yeah. is across the street. It's in the city's 18th Street Park. It's mm -hmm. a big field, mm -hmm. and if you, you've driven by it a million times probably yeah. and, yeah. and have, have, have not realized that it was there, but it is yeah. a wonderful asset to the community and volunteer-driven, as you have heard from yeah. Sheila. So um, let's see. So how did the city support the garden? You did. You were mentioning some other things, but um, through marketing and social media, our parks department, correct, Robert Bell and yeah, his team. Yeah, Robert Bell's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and helping us um, not only plot out the uh, rebuild of the, of the garden, because it was a complete rebuild, demolition, flattened, rebuild from, from square one. And what year was that? And done? that was 2018. From not too I long believe. ago. Not that long ago, yeah. so we increased the um, the space that we were able to grow in, I think by 50%, because we doubled the size of the beds, and we got a larger communal area. So they were very instrumental. The city was fabulous in helping us not only flatten it, level it, and then assisting actually in the rebuild. Robert Bell came out with a couple of his uh, couple of folks to come out and digging into the community, building all the fence, all the wood, all, and then all of the concrete blocks. We had 1,500 concrete blocks that had to be laid to build and then getting all the soil in. So all it was right. a huge project. They were very supportive. And then they also keep that um, wooded area right next to it cleaned out, um, keeping it safe for all of us and keeping that whole park just mowed and it's used by so many different people so and different groups. So yeah, they've been very supportive in promoting and then helping us in any way we need with the garden, delivering compost when we need it as well. So, so wonderful shout out to the yeah, City Sanford City Parks Sanford Department. Awesome. <laughs> That's right. So when was the garden transformation complete? Um, I believe it was to December of 2017 and it went into the beginning of 18 before mm -hmm. it actually was completely complete and all the beds were redone. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Sheila, can you share some stories about how the garden really made an impact on, how, share some of those stories really about impacts about that um, yeah, garden? Yeah, there's a lot. I was thinking a lot about that today because I knew it was going to be here and it was, it was, it was great because I go by the garden on my way home every day and I thought, you know, when I go by and I look at it, how do I feel? And I get so excited because of so many kids, which is where my heart is, I really wanted people to reconnect with nature, have reverence for the planet, for the little worms and the critters that drive us crazy as gardeners, but uh, they do a lot of work. So do the bees and the butterflies. And mm -hmm. I plant for pollinators. I'm a horrible gardener, I have to say. I did learn a few things, but I didn't go there to learn to garden. I wanted to build a community. Ah. And that's what I saw. And I saw friendships flourish. You see people that are lawyers, they're doctors, there's 
and anybody you can possibly imagine would be in the garden and you sit there and you dig in the dirt side by side and all kinds of great friendships yeah. unexpected ones and expected ones they get to know their neighbors a lot of people move back to Sanford after years came back and got to know their neighbors again and build friendships and it's just a really cool gardeners are cool people yeah so that's a, I have to say they don't mind getting dirty in the mud and they they don't care what they look like yeah so they're my favorite kind of people great story <laughs> I mean, building friendships like that. Uh, Sanford is a wonderful community, and the garden certainly helps that. And it's, how are how can one get involved in the garden? Are you going to talk about that, Kelly? I am. Okay, because yeah, I does. can't wait to hear that. <laughs> can how, I tell you one more little story? Yeah, though? please do. We had a gardener. Her name was Evola, and she was with the garden from day one. And she was adamant about always continuing with the garden, and even as she uh, battled cancer multiple times, she would always show up at the garden. And so we would help her, and you know. Take care of the plot when needed. Um, but it got to the point where she said, no, don't don't weed for me. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there, you know, and she was really struggling. And one of the beautiful things about the garden is that as she was losing her struggle with cancer, mm -hmm. um, the garden leaders, they were taking food to her. Right. They were mending her plot and doing what needed to be done and growing for her and harvesting and delivering to her to help her. And it just meant the world to her. So we did lose her this past year. Oh, but what a, what I just wanted to give a shout out. That's yeah. just some of the cool stuff that happens from the garden. What a so. great personal heartwarming story yeah. that you bring people together yeah. in their time of need. And she and loved that's the so garden. Special. She loved the friendships that were made there. So Yeah, it yeah. sounds like a really peaceful fun place yes, you know it it, is. and being outdoors and around other people like-minded people as well so um one of the other cool people is kelly here sitting next to me the new president <laughs> as of last year i kept my eye on her she doesn't know this for a whole year before really? i ever spoke to her about jumping into the position but she's an amazing mom her kids are just fabulous gardeners very curious oh. um passionate about gardening and health she's a wellness coach she's a registered dietitian um, she's amazing. That's all I can say. She's doing a fabulous job. <laughs> well, so. Wonderful. Thank you. Kelly, welcome. So, <laughs> Thank you yeah, so much. So this is great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And uh, so you've been president for about a year now. Yes. How's your new leadership position helping expand your passion for garden education with children? So uh, one of the main reasons that I became a member of the Sanford Community Garden was to immerse my kids in gardening. We started at home with a really small plot. And uh, so we did some there, but I knew that there were some kids there and I wanted them to kind of flourish as far as that community part also and really get to learn it. And I didn't know the garden was there until I did a search for gardening in Sanford and <laughs> voila. And I was like, where is this place? And it is just a wonderful um, little niche in that 18th Street Park. But now that I've become more active at the garden, I enjoy getting to teach even more children and watch their excitement. Uh, you know, when they see their seeds turn into plants and when they're walking around the garden and they see these butterflies and they try to catch or follow the butterflies yeah. and the bees. Um, and when they get to explore different plots and see all the different flowers and everything that people's planting, it's just really exciting to to see that excitement in them and see them want to learn about how it all works. Sure. So it's really great. Yeah. Yes. And so what goals do you have for the future of the garden? What are your goals as the new All president? Right. So one of my biggest goals this year is to complete our educational garden. So in that community space that Sheila was talking about, part of it is going to be transformed into what we're calling an educational garden. But within that garden, there is going to be some sensory gardens with some touch and sniff plants. So I kids and adults, everyone, mm -hmm. can go through and, you know, touch the plants, take a little piece off, sniff them, taste them, mm -hmm. and everything will be labeled. We'll also have some growing gardens where kids can, kids can grow edibles like a salsa garden or a salad garden, and then we'll actually prepare things together so they Wonder. can put that whole circle together. Right. Um, it'll also ho have host plants and nectar plants for the butterflies. And we will also spotlight different native plants, and that's going to help to educate all the visitors on the importance of having natives. Sure. Yes. Um, one other thing that's really cool that we already do have, but we're going to be putting in this garden, is a free little library, which is really popular right now. So the Exora Garden Club in Sanford, was, they were gracious enough to fund that. So that will be placed in there also. So okay. kids and adults can grab a book and take it home, replace a book, read within the garden, and just really have a nice little um, 
nice little spot. Yeah, that. this is such great news. It really yes. is for for everyone listening, for residents and of Sanford, I think. And you said that this is the only garden, one of the only gardens mm -hmm. in Seminole County. Is that correct? Is here in the city of Sanford? Yeah, I yes. haven't found one. And when I when I was <laughs> you president, go searching, I would get right? <laughs> I well, I would get all these emails from Deland and a lot of them from Longwood. Like Mary, um, all asking, will you come open one here? Will you come open mm -hmm. one here? So I just started giving them Im information on talk to your city leadership, see where they've got some land, and see what you can do because it, it does so much for the community. It makes yeah. it a healthier community, a more a more um, I don't know, it's a more communal space, and it's a great way to make friends in a really natural way. So and it does make you healthier. There's actually statistics that say you're mm -hmm. if you grow your own food, you're you're taking in about 40 to 50 percent more vegetables than anybody else yeah so it is great and you're eating seasonal mm -hmm. and there's no transportation of food across the country it's local it's it's organic and mm -hmm. doesn't get better than that right so like some people think gardening is is planting a flower and yeah. watching it grow right but we're talking about like planting cucumbers planting mm -hmm. dill thyme, sage, yeah that kind yeah. of stuff and actually harvesting it mm -hmm. right yeah and yes. that's what this is about is that you can Make your sa plant your salad basically yeah. in the garden, and then bring it home when it's done. And what a nice way to do that in yeah. your yes. city, around the corner from where you live, with yeah. a bunch of people that you are your resident, friendly residents and friends, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then yeah. you learn things along the way. And so, how do people get involved? Are there plots available? How does that work? All right. So um, part of our membership is that we do. Um, second Saturdays, which are is our educational time, so we do focus a lot on education, first of all. Um, so these educational sessions are open to everyone, first of all. So even if you're not a member, you can attend these. So the best way to find out all this information is through our Facebook page, the Sanford Community Garden Facebook page. Okay. We also do have a website, the SanfordCommunityGarden.com, okay. that you can visit. But we do post all of our upcoming events on the Facebook page mostly. That's the, the best way to get through us. Okay. Um, but to become a member, what you do is simply send me an email, either through uh, our Gmail address, which is SanfordCommunityGarden at gmail.com. Nice and simple, everything's yeah. the same. <laughs> or you can send a message through Facebook also if you're on that. And what we'll do is we'll set up a tour. So I love getting tours. I get to meet new people and see their excitement. And, you know, some of them are overwhelmed. I think I was overwhelmed when I first came to garden. And I remember talking with Sheila and saying, I'm not really good at gardening. She's like, Psh, me neither. She's yeah. like, that's why <laughs> you join. Is that a prerequisite? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but oh but God. a lot of people do. They think that they have to know a lot. But you can know nothing. And mm -hmm. the cool thing is everyone in the garden knows different things. Mm -hmm. And when you're there, you talk to people. You share your harvest. You know, they're going to be asking, what are these mm -hmm. things? And you talk about it. And you say, here, take some. Take mm -hmm. some home and do this with it. You know, one of our board members had never tasted okra, and I was growing it this uh, summer. So she grew it, and now they love okra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's just fun to share yeah. in that. So you do not have to have any experience. We'll teach you, but also give you references and resources along the way. So you can, you know, just dabble in whatever really interests you the most. Mm -hmm. So you can email me or Facebook me, and we'll set up a tour. And uh, we do have some plots available. Our renewal is February 1st. So come February 1st, we do have several that will be available. So please email me soon if you're interested. And we'll set up that tour. And then we just go through all the details. Again, the annual membership is $50. And that covers the cost to use the compost that we have and uh, the tools that we have also. And then yeah. the gardeners provide their own plants and seeds. Okay. We do share seeds a lot. Um, but they do, that's what you have to provide. Right. And what plant. about the watering of your We have plot? a watering system. So okay. the gardeners are responsible to water their plots. But we have watering groups where if you're going to be out of town, you ask your neighbor to water. And um, it's worked out really well. People are, you know, mm -hmm. definitely able to help. But we do have a watering system there so people can water with. Okay. So system. what if happens if somebody is finished, they just decide, I don't want to do this anymore. And they, they're... Their plants are there. Their lettuce is mm -hmm. there. Their seeds for their corn and their broccoli. What happens to that? Who takes it over? Does it just okay. die and then turn into compost? Well, I don't know. Is this? Yeah. So what would happen is I would reach out to the actual gardener that is leaving, and typically they'll come get their stuff. So 
I've harvested people's plots before and they come by and pick it up if they're not able to do yeah. it. Um, or they'll say, eh, do whatever you want with it. So I'll have the gardeners just pick whatever right. they want and then we'll clear out the plot for the next people okay. and get it all ready for them. And how big is a plot usually in it's, your garden? Yeah, so it's concrete blocks and it's four by 16. So you have the inside of the blocks, but you can also use the the inside the of the inside concrete. of the concrete yeah, the blocks. Inside of the yes. concrete blocks are great <laughs> for those herbs are to go all the way around. Yes. We do a lot of herbs in those. Okay. And carrots. Uh -huh. mm. okay. Carrots grow great. That sounds yeah. good. And I yeah. learned it's harvesting. You're calling it harvesting. Yes. That's yes. different than gardening. Mm -hmm. So harvesting is when you cut the the food and take it home. You're harvesting, ah, you're taking everything home. Okay. So gardening, you put the seeds in or the plants in, you water, you feed, you let it grow, and then um, you learn when to harvest, and then you ah, make sure you're there okay. to harvest this And speak yes. of, speaking of when to harvest, so mm -hmm. it's like 20 degrees out now. <laughs> so what happens? Now, we're normally, that's not the normal weather in Florida, right? Right. right. So, so how does that affect the garden? Does Do you have to, when they say cover your plants and things like that, this doesn't happen mm -hmm. a lot, of course, here in Sanford, but how does that work where you, you know, the weather is this way, do the right. do you have to plant certain plants mm -hmm. or garden until, you know, throughout the year in this, in this location? Right. Or, so there's different seasonal crops seasonal. that the Extension Office has some great resources that we use to teach people what to grow. Um, but it's on the seed packets also. So <laughs> it's all there for you, which is nice. Um, now with this freezing weather, when we have stuff like that, people can cover. Um, I know I was out there yesterday taking all my tomatoes off because I figured they might not make it. Aww. So they're sitting in my windowsill. But some things like broccoli and cabbage actually thrive with the really cold weather. So you can leave those open. So it's kind of a... You know, you got to do what you can do and hope yeah. that they all survive and okay. cover the really sensitive things. Yeah. I, just... I like the cold weather because it kills bugs. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I, You're I a bug killer, that Sheila. And I don't like mosquitoes, <laughs> which is why I, I tried to get us uh, that bat house years ago, which they kill a lot of mosquitoes right. for us at the garden. Yeah. Yes. I just think the whole process is very interesting mm -hmm. and, and just really cool to be able to plant something and then watch it grow mm -hmm. and will harvest it. No, you're gardening it and then you harvest <laughs> it and you bring it home and you eat it and you become healthy from the natural yeah. food you're putting into your body yes. that you and grew. And you save a lot of money that way. And you, yes. <laughs> that's, I think that's a big deal, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So this is some great information about the Sanford Community Garden. Is there anything else that you want to say, Kelly? Yes, so um, I know Sheila mentioned it briefly before, but we do have organic practices at the garden, which I absolutely love, and it's one of the things that really drew me to the garden is everything is organic, everything from the plants to the feed that we're putting on it and the okay. soil that we have. Um, and we do educate a lot on the soil health because that's really important too. So I do want to throw that out there, that yeah. it is organic practice only, wonderful. which is wonderful. It's yes. great for the environment and great for us also. Um, and part of the membership also that I didn't mention is one of the requirements is that everyone does community service. We do an hour every quarter, but we try to make it fun. So once a month, we have a community service project that we work around in the garden. And we also, we adopted 18th Street Park. So at once a quarter, we do a cleanup there, which is, we have a lot of fun. The kids love the trash grabbers and picking up everything. And we, we always do a challenge to see who finds the most interesting things. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that's our requirement, but it's so easy to do. And people, it, it actually helps to build the community doing the community service because everyone gets together and has fun with it. Yeah, and you talk about the second Saturdays is a great time yes. to come out. So yes. we're what time on Saturday? So it's the second Saturday of every month, and we were doing eight thirty, but now it's going to be starting at nine o'clock in the morning. Um, so we do an hour of community service from nine to ten, and then from ten to eleven we have guest speakers. So I post those on the Facebook page, okay. and the speaker and the topic would be there. So that information will be available at least a month ahead of time. Okay. So that would be in February, if I'm looking at the calendar correctly, that's the 15th. That's the it would, second, sa oh, the 8th. 8th, yes. Because there's five Saturdays in you almost February. Me. Sorry. <laughs> February 8th, yes. Yes, okay. February 8th. All right. And I also want to give a shout out. If anybody out there wants to be a guest speaker, they can contact mm. the garden. Yes. Because we're always looking for people who have unique talents, whether it's hydroponics or... 
um, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, yeah. any process that has to do with the garden, um, learning sustainability, ecology, worms, whatever it is, there's, everybody loves to have guest speakers. Okay, so well, and that they can just contact uh, Sanford Community Garden at gmail.com. Okay. Mrs. Kelly, yeah. Thank All right, you. and so when you you speak about organic, can you just share with the listeners what does make the garden organic? Is it because there's no fertilizers being used? Is that what it is, or what what is the process right. that so defines it? The organic. Okay, so the plants have any of the plants that you use have not been sprayed by any synthetic fertilizers, and then when you're putting food into the ground, the the nutrients they are they're not synthetically made. So they don't have any of the chemicals in them. So they're all, those are all organic. Okay. Um, and then our soil, we use a local mushroom compost for our soil additive, um, which comes with a membership too. Okay. So we add that in. Um, but yes, that's pretty much it. Am I missing anything? Yeah, and then for that? pesticides, basically oh. organic yes. gardening. And, and again, we're not certified organic. That's a really right. touchy little subject. Mm -hmm. So what we just say is we teach organic practices, okay. and it's in the bylaws that you have to follow organic practices. Okay. So if you see a bug, you don't go buy some spray and just kill it because, right. you know, that'll get into the soil. Yeah. So it's basically controlling the pest by working with them and putting beneficial yeah. insects in and promoting um, beneficial insects to come in, and they take care of the bad ones usually for you. So yeah. it's a labor of love. I mean, you got to work with Mother Nature yeah. and not against her. So. Have nature do it, yeah. yes. <laughs> so you speak of the your your board right you're the president do you mm -hmm. have other how big is your board yes. how many volunteers are you talking about yes we have four members right now so we have a vice president which is victoria myers and then we have a secretary who is also our garden manager that takes care of the maintenance of the garden which is morgan aiken and then we have a treasurer scott fowler so there's okay. the four of us all right mm -hmm. is there any last words that you ladies would like to say the location again and um, anything else, how they can find out more information. So again, just visit us on Facebook at the Sanford Community Garden and send out an email to sanfordcommunitygarden at gmail.com. Okay. And we'd love to see you. Yes. All and right. I think you need to join us, Lisa. I yes. do. I think you sold me on it already <laughs> like 20 a, minutes ago. <laughs> I have a membership form in my car, so we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. get you set up. <laughs> I think I'm going to be out there. Well, thank you, Sheila DePace. And Kelly Kuhn, Stanford Community Garden. This is some great information for our city and our residents. Thanks so much for adding to the wonderful city of Stanford. Thank you so much. And thanks for listening to the Sanford Says Podcast. You can subscribe today wherever you get your podcasting or the on the city website at sanfordfl.gov. Again, thank you for listening to Sanford Says. Have a great day. <laughs>